Golden Kingdom has been discovered at Six Flags Great Adventure. A land of mystery, a land of intrigue, and rising above it all, the tallest, fastest roller coaster on Earth, King Dakar. You will hit 128 miles per hour and soar 456 feet in the air. It's a whole new great adventure. All righty. So as many of you might already know, Craig and I from Amusement Insiders will be heading to Six Flags Great Adventure this Sunday and Monday and Hershey Park on Tuesday and then coming back to Canada to Canada's Wonderland, our home park. Craig has not been to an amusement park outside of Canada's Wonderland other than Marineland and Centerville, and those don't really count as theme parks. They don't have any of these out-of-the-world attractions um, that we don't have here in Canada. So um, for him, this is going to be a huge trip. For me, I've only been to Cedar Point and the Orlando Parks, so I have been on coasters very similar to the coasters at this park, but there are things that I'm really looking forward to, and I'm here to explain why I know I'm going to end up loving Great Adventure. I've had a very mixed people coming up to me and telling me, you know, I'm really going to like the roller coasters, but I'm not going to like the park, this and that, and their opinions. And everyone has different opinions. And for those that travel a lot, especially, they have very differing opinions from me. So for any of you know, that know me, I'm a theme park enthusiast, not necessarily a roller coaster enthusiast. Um, and Great Adventure is absolutely looking promising for me. So I'm going to explain why I think this is going to be an amazing trip, why I think this is going to be an amazing park, and the things that I'm looking forward to, and the things that I'm kind of expecting. And then I'm going to make a video after the trip, kind of going over what ended up happening and my thoughts on things. So first of all, Six Legs Great Adventure is an absolutely well-rounded park um, before going into it. Again, I have not been here. This is me making assumptions based off of what I'm um, seeing. Their water park looks absolutely amazing. I've heard it's absolutely packed most of the year. It looks very well themed and they got some really awesome water slides. On top of that, they have a safari. So Six Legs Great Adventure has a safari um, and some amazing roller coasters. And they now appear to be building up their flat ride collection as well. And in a very impressive way, they got um, a I don't know if they were necessarily first, but they got those weird flat rides that kind of like a gyroscope or whatever they're called. I know I don't know the name of it and y'all can drag me in the comments below. And then they got the world's tallest pendulum ride. So that's going to be super fun. I haven't been on anything bigger than a Mondial version or the one at Cedar Point, which I absolutely love. So I have a feeling I'm going to love this one as well. Great Adventure has also been focusing on environmental things. Uh, they built a very large solar farm and a lot of enthusiasts don't care. But for someone like me, this is really impressive. And I'm really proud that a park, especially Six Flags, is taking steps in the right direction, especially the size of the farm as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing what other Six Flags parks have to offer. And uh, I definitely think other parks like Cedar Fair need to step up their game in terms of their environmental footprint. I would love to see a lot of people doing this. In fact, it cuts down on your bill. So in the end, I don't see why more parks aren't doing stuff like this. So I'm very excited to step foot into Six Flags Great Adventure this weekend um, and check out all of the things they have to offer. Again, they have an impressive water park. They have an impressive roller coaster lineup. It looks like they're really coming along with their theming and building a more impressive, well-rounded park. Again, a lot of these parks weren't very um, focused around theming and beauty and uh, Cedar Fair it picked up the game after Paramount so again some of the Paramount parks and Cedar Fair parks don't look that great either so you can't really um look at Six Flags and judge them too harshly um, so it looks like Six Flags and Cedar Fair are both heading in the right direction and I really love that um, and I can't wait to see this firsthand. So here's that flat ride I was really talking about earlier. Um, I'm super excited to ride this. I've been wanting to ride one of these forever. And the fact that I'm going to a park and being able to get on one of these is super awesome. I know these aren't everyone's cup of tea, but I really like flat rides. Um, I don't know why. I just really do. Uh, they still make me sick. They still give me the weird feelings. And I think that's why I really like them. 
Um, and this is one of those that have been on my bucket list. Again, throughout the video, comment down below your thoughts on Six Flags Great Adventure, any advice you have for Craig and I, um, or any videos you'd like to see from us while we're at the park filming. Um, because we're super excited. Craig is kind of scared of some of the rides, um, and I'm definitely scared of some of the rides as well. Um, but yes, here's the pendulum ride. So the world's tallest pendulum ride. I'm super excited for this one. It looks like it's going to have some amazing forces, which I'm not used to at Canada's Wonderland. No shade. It's just a family park. Nothing against Canada's Wonderland. They're not doing anything wrong. It's just a more GP family audience. And unfortunately, that means we don't get these amazing high thrill attractions. Although Yukon Striker was um, an amazing coaster, and it looks like all the Americans that have been coming over and riding it agree. So that's super exciting. Um, but on top of that, I'm definitely looking forward to um, <laughs> some of the water rides. I know a lot of people are like, why are you looking forward to water rides? Well, I am. I'm looking forward to uh, the log ride. It looks super long, and I'm super excited about that. We used to have this log ride at Ontario Place in Toronto, and this is giving me vibes off of that, and I'm super excited to kind of just get back on a long attraction. I also want to touch that the um, the flat rides at Great Adventure look to have really long ride cycles. And that's not something I'm used to at Canada's Wonderland. Our ride cycles are like 30 seconds long and they're very boring. Um, and I've actually stopped riding a lot of the flat rides at Wonderland just because it's very pointless to get on a flat ride and ride it for 30 seconds. Um, this is one that I'm insanely scared of. So Zumanjaro Drop Tower, I am not looking forward to it. I'm going to go on it. I'm going to be scared. I'm not going to like it. I have this weird fear that I'm going to die on these things, even though I know I'm not. Um, but here we have it. Okay, so this is going to be Shade at Cedar Fair, a dark ride done right. This is what they should have gone with at Cedar Fair. Sally um, Corporation should have been the ones to do our dark ride. I'm super disappointed, but I'm super excited to get on this. This looks impressive. I'm super excited. I We have a really bad one at Candace Wonder, and the drop track is the only good thing, and the rest of it is literally garbage. I hate it. Um, and then we have another bucket list ride at the park that I'm super excited to get on. I've wanted to get on one of these for a really long time. So I'm so excited to get on this thing. Um, it's just there's a lot of bucket list items at this park. And the more I've been thinking about it over the last couple of days, the more excited I am to go to this park. And it's crazy. I'm going to Hershey Park right after. So I'm like getting two parks that I've wanted to go on rides forever. So it's just going to be a really good trip. If you happen to bump into us or meet us at the park, you're probably going to see me like I'm going to be the happiest I've ever been. Um, and of course, everyone's like, what is Brennan thinking of El Toro? What's he going to think after he rides it? I already know I'm going to like El Toro. OK, I used to love Behemoth. I used to think it was the best coaster at Canada's Wonderland. That has changed this year. It's just operating differently. I'm not going to get into that in this video. But El Toro looks like what I wish Behemoth was. And um I'm very curious as to what my thoughts are going to be for it compared to Steel Vengeance. So I'm super curious um, if I'm going to like it more than Steel Vengeance or if I'm going to like Steel Vengeance more than it. I am one of those people that at first look, I don't see how I could like this more than Steel Vengeance. Steel Vengeance, just in my opinion, is a better package, a whole deal. So when you're looking at like what gets you... Um, a better value. <laughs> it looks like Steel Vengeance has more to offer. and But that's just me before going on it. Um, I'm definitely going to ride this. And if I end up liking it more than Steel Vengeance, I will fully admit that it is better than Steel Vengeance in my opinion. So super excited to get on El Toro. Um, it looks amazing. Um, when you compare it to Wild Beast or Mindbuster at Canada's Wonderland, I already know I'm going to like it. Thunderhead at Dollywood was one of my favorite wooden coasters ever. Um, again, here's a controversial opinion. I even liked Thunderhead more than I liked Lightning Rod at Dollywood. Uh, I was going to wait to say that till my um, coaster countdown, all coasters ranked at Dollywood. But uh, yeah, I have a feeling that I might. I mean, it, it just shows that there's a good chance I could like El Toro more than Seal Vengeance. Um, and then obviously they have King Daka. I've heard that King Daka isn't as good as Top Thrill, even though it's taller um, due to the restraints. Um, but I heard the launch is amazing. I will definitely compare the two. I'm super excited. It's taller. I know Craig is going to cry or be really scared. And I'm excited about that alone. I'm going to film his reaction in the queue line and everything. Don't worry. I got that covered. Um, but yeah, we're going to get into the B&Ms at this park. I am a B&M fanboy. I'll admit it. Um, so this is definitely a coaster I'm looking forward to a lot. This is Bizarro, uh, their floorless coaster. We don't have one at Canada's Wonderland unless you want to count Yukon Striker as a floorless. It is a floorless coaster, but it's a dive coaster. But um, I just love floorless coasters, and this one's got a really long layout, so I know I'm going to like it a lot. 
Um, I'm one of those people that really love Rougarou at Cedar Point, so I know I'm going to come off of this really liking it. Um, I just, I don't know what it is. Flores Coasters really just do it for me. Um, I like their layouts. I like how they're like, almost like inverted coasters by B&M, but they're like sit down because I'm not a fan of inverted coasters. I don't know what it is. I never have a comfortable ride experience. My legs hurt. Um, like it feels like my blood is being like pushed all the way down into the very base of my legs. And I hate that feeling because I have a fear of blood um, and I get really anxious and I start to get really sick when I like start thinking about blood. Um, so that's this kind of plays into why I don't like inverted coasters. But here's my number one favorite coaster model in the world. All of you can laugh. I don't care. I love flying coasters. And I know this is going to be one of my favorites. Um, it does have not as good of a layout as um, Manta at SeaWorld. But I still know I'm going to come off this thing loving it. I just love the feeling. They're comfortable. Um, and it's just something I'm not used to because we have Time Warp at Canada's Wonderland. And that thing is a piece of garbage. I don't care what you say about it. It is not a coaster that belongs at a Cedar Fair Park. It's not a coaster that belongs at a massive park like Canada's Wonderland. It is a fairground attraction. I don't care what you have to say in the comment section. It sucks. Okay, it sucks. Um, but Nitro, this one's very controversial. So I've been told by everyone, their home park being this park, um, people who have been to both Wonderland and this park, that Behemoth is way better than this. So I'm probably not going to like it. But I've been told that it's also a good ride experience. I think this ride and a lot of rides in the coaster community get hated on a lot more than they deserve to be. Um, Behemoth is a classic example. I really don't like Behemoth, but it doesn't deserve the amount of hate that I kind of talk about it. I don't know what it is. I just think that its ride experience before um, was a lot better than now. But it's still an amazing coaster. Obviously, a lot of Americans that have been coming this year and riding it say it's like one of their top rides in the park. So clearly it's an amazing coaster, and I have a feeling this is one of those coasters that a lot of enthusiasts hate on, and it's not actually a bad coaster. I can already tell this Helix is going to be more forceful than Behemoth's Helix, so I'm super excited to see the ride experience compared to Behemoth and this. Um, I'll definitely be making videos about that, um, and it does look like it has an amazing layout. Again, I'm really excited about this park. I'm really excited to experience everything. We got um, all season flash pass. Um, and all those goodies. So super excited to go in and review this park. I know um, Batman is no longer riding backwards, couldn't find a POV by the park um, to use that isn't, but uh, I know I'm not going to like this coaster. I've heard it's super forceful, so I know I'm going to be in a lot of pain and I'm going to be super grossed out and I may throw up when I get off um, because of the whole blood thing. Um, I know I'm really weird. I can admit it at least, um, but I've heard this is a really good coaster. I've heard it's uh, very forceful compared to other clones. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm super excited to see Krega on a real invert other than Flight Deck. Um, I have a feeling he's going to like it a lot. Um, so I'm very excited. But a lot of the trip is mostly me being excited to see Krega's kind of reactions on good coasters. You know, we have Leviathan Behemoth and Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland. And outside of that, we don't have any good coasters. So Craig has really only been on three good coasters. Um, so seeing him on a lot more coasters is going to be super exciting. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really excited about this trip. I know Hershey Park is going to be absolutely amazing. Um, the stand-up coaster at Great Adventure, I know it's going to be very painful for me, but I, it looks like a really fun ride as well. Craig has never been on a stand-up coaster. He never got to go on Skyrider. He was scared of rides up until about halfway through the season last year. So he's very new to roller coasters as well. For those of you that don't know too much about him. So it's just going to be super exciting. Amusement Insiders is GP. Um, whatever. We're going to have a lot of fun because of it. And this is going to be an amazing trip. And Six Flags Great Adventure looks to be an amazingly well-rounded theme park that we're probably going to absolutely love. So again, this is the before visiting the park video. Um, the after the visiting the park video will come out, obviously, after visiting the park. Um, I'll be dropping a video about Hershey Park tomorrow, same style, um, kind of like what I'm thinking about the park going in, what are my thoughts and everything. But yeah, drop any comments um, or advice down below, and hopefully we'll, you run into us at Six Legs Great Adventure while we're there this uh, Sunday and Monday. Super excited. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. Have a good one, guys. Bye.